the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. The verse selected by our 8th grade class this year for this service and this sermon. Paul writes, But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. Okay, 8th grade. You have heard me say far more than once that at your age you have no business having an internet-equipped smartphone. Your teachers and your principal prove this regularly by requiring you to put those things in a cabinet in your classroom before the school day begins. Now, I very strongly suspect that it is your parents who not only bought, but continue to pay the monthly bill that comes along with that device that you might carry whenever you're able. And yet I'm wondering, how many of you have a smartphone on you right now? If so, go ahead, get it out. Now, if you don't have one, and if you actually don't have one, I've got another $5 bill for you. Not tonight, sorry. They're hard to come by, and you know, I already explained, I don't carry cash. But if you come up to me at some point in the future and say, Pastor, I still didn't have a smartphone the time I graduated from 8th grade, I will give you $5. Or go to an ATM, even though they're not known for giving out $5 bills. Anyway, if you have a smartphone with you, 8th grade, go ahead, get it out right now, please. I want you to check something for me. How many of you have them? Come on, show it out. Only one? All right. Donovan, he's our test subject. Donovan, hey, you've got your phone. Did somebody Snapchat you? Oh, did I, whoa, whoa, don't care. Yeah, not interested. Uh, is, there, is there a new TikTok to watch? Blah, nothing that matters. I'm sure of it. What about this? Are you expecting a voicemail? No. No one leaves those anymore. Did someone email you? Can you see? No, yeah, you don't have a job that requires email. You're done with school as of today. Probably not much email coming. Ooh, but what about this? Is your Facebook notifying you? Is it really? I thought that'd be an easy one, because Facebook is only for old people. <laughs> well, anyway, I do want to know, what is your battery percentage at right now? 54%. All right, we'll keep that in mind. And we'll keep that in mind as we remember our first examination together as a class of the Third Commandment. The Third Commandment calls us to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And as we examine, Martin Luther tells us that this means that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching or his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. When we first discussed this commandment, we came to recognize, again, no doubt, that this commandment teaches that anyone who skips church is actually breaking God's clear law and sinning. It also shows us that we can do that even if we can break the third commandment, even if we are in church every week. Because if we're there and we're not valuing or paying attention to or perhaps following along with what's taking place during the service, we are sinning. The third commandment gives us one more reminder that God gives us his law, all of his law, because it is good for us and good for those around us. Each of God's commandments are given to us for our good. They show us how to love him and how to love our neighbors. They point us both to our sin and to our need for repentance, that is, to let go of our sin because it hurts, even worse than an electrical shock forced upon our hand by someone else's hand. Yes, I'm staring at the two of you on purpose. Yes, I remember that day well. And now, yes, I'm staring at all others whom I suspect to have been laughing on as I was victimized by their prankish ways. And any of you who don't know what we're talking about, it's because you are talking about something that you probably don't even care about anymore. And so you are missing out on something that was perceived to be funny by your immediate peer. But it was funny, and I will probably laugh about it for a long time, because like most men, my sense of humor came to its point of full maturity and was set into place when I was about 14 years old. But the world itself has changed dramatically since I was 14. 
Many of you, although not tonight, do carry around those stupid, I mean smartphones, and with them, many real temptations to mock or attack your classmates or others from behind a screen or a small digital keyboard, or to waste away hours of your day playing video games, or to access all sorts of evil that can ruin your view of God's good gift of marriage and family and also many other dangers. And yes, you can also read the Bible, or access a daily devotion, or even make use of the St. John's YouTube channel with one such device. And I do hope that those of you who have them, or obtain them in the future, will make use of these things as these coming years unfold. And I want that for you, because I want for you what I have told you from the start of this academic year. I want each one of you to be connected to a Christian congregation that connects you physically to God himself through his means of grace. In eighth grade, what are the means of grace? One last time. Holy baptism, holy communion, and the holy scriptures. This is how God creates and strengthens our faith. I want you connected to these good gifts of God because I want for you what I expect your parents and your grandparents and all of your family want for you even more. We together want you to know how serious sin is and how seriously you need to confess it and repent of it. We want that for you because we know how much we ourselves need it. This is why St. John's Lutheran School was founded. And this is why each one of you has been here for at least one year, and perhaps as many as ten. Your parents most likely sent you here because of one truth. Your battery is running out. You will not live forever, not in this life. You can't, and I can't, and none of us here can. And so you need a force, a power that is bigger even than death. Your so-called smartphone is not the answer, and of course, mine isn't either. In fact, right now, this isn't going to be good. Oh, here's a text message, wonderful. Uh, I am at 30%, so I'm even lower than you, Donovan, but I will admit, this is a really old one. This is an iPhone 8. I bought it four years ago, and I've been noticing that its battery is not holding, uh, its battery charge is not holding as well these days. But I also want to assure you that it's not my screen time that's the problem. Because once I got this one, it started tracking how often I was looking at its lit screen. And it shamed me. Because I realized that my young children were growing up every day, and I was spending far too much time looking at this instead of looking at them. That's because life does move quickly. I'm sure many of you and your parents are wondering, how in the world is tonight eighth grade graduation? You yourselves are asking, what am I doing graduating from 8th grade? And they're asking, why is my baby in the front row ready to receive this diploma? Life moves fast. And this stuff might not be on your mind right now. But even if it isn't, you need a promise that can see you from life to death and to life again. Your phone, as up-to-date and fast and ridiculously expensive as it may be, as temptation-riddled and likewise somewhat useful for fruitful endeavors as it may be, that phone will one day wear out and die. Or it might find its way into one of those weird machines I've been seeing at grocery stores, promising cash for smartphones. I don't know about those. I don't know where your phone will end up, but I do know that every single person will end up in one eternal dwelling place or the other. Jesus Christ took on our flesh for the purpose of redeeming it. He proves it by having come into this world, sacrificing his own life and allowing it to be drained on the cross. He then took his life back up again in accordance with the Father's plan. He rose again after experiencing death, far worse than what a cell phone endures in the time between its charging sessions. His victory over sin and death is something he shares with us freely, and he established his church 
to assure us that we have ready access to it throughout the entirety of our lives. Paul's words, But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. This is the verse that you together selected as a class, and it is one that lines up perfectly with what we need and with what God does for us. He works outside of us to keep us in the faith, using his objective means of grace to deliver what we need more than our next breath. Daily, he goes with us through his word to strengthen us and to assure us that regardless of our circumstances, his love for us will never change. This is a promise that he delivers to us through the waters of holy baptism and one that he renews each week from his altar in holy communion. These gifts... What we gather around in worship each week is how the Lord stands by us, his people, and this is how he strengthens us for every day of our lives. Our batteries are running down. Our world is further breaking apart, even as we continue to see more evil violence in our world just this past week and in our community and throughout our nation. And only the faith that he works in our hearts by his grace can see us through the darkness of death and into the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. So eighth grade, God's blessings to you, each of you, as you go forward. Life will be changing quickly and moving fast. And there are times where it will continue to wear you down. So I offer you this last formal call to make regular use of the rest and the support that he alone can offer, which is available to you each day in his word and each week as we join together in the divine service for worship. Amen. At this time, we will hear from our class's salutatorian, Lillian Howard. <laughs> 